If this story were to be a fairy tale, our protagonist, Kotaro would definitely not be the hero of the story. This is what Kotaro always believed, until that fateful day. A few days earlier, in the bustling classroom, someone called out to Ryuzaki. They asked if he wanted to go shopping for swimsuits with them. Ryuzaki laughed and said it was only May, which he thought was too early for swimsuits. Ryuzaki Ryoma would definitely be the main character if this was a fairy tale world. It was Azusa who called out to Ryuzaki, and she told Ryuzaki that she wanted him to see her in a swimsuit soon. Another girl with straight black hair chimed in, agreeing with Azusa, saying she had grown a lot since last year and her old swimsuit didn't fit anymore. A blonde girl then joined the conversation, suggesting that they all go swimsuit shopping together. Listening to all this and seeing the girls all gathered around Ryuzaki, Kataru sighed tiredly. His life felt like a simple, everyday drama, but Ryuzaki's life seemed like a romantic comedy. It wasn't always this way and Kotara never thought it would end up this way. Those three girls used to be close to Kotara. When high school started, they slowly drifted away from him. Azusa, who is Kotara's little sister, began to admire Ryuzaki a lot. She even started calling him, Big Brother, in a loving way. Even though Azusa and Kotara aren't really related by blood, he always treated her like a real brother. Yuzuki, the second girl with black hair, was Kotara's childhood friend. But when she fell in love with Ryuzaki, she started avoiding Kotaro. Yuzuki, once self-conscious about her chest size, now confidently flaunts it as a weapon of mass destruction. Kirari used to be one of Kotaro's closest friends. She loved reading but gave it up and changed herself just to be close to Ryuzaki. Kotaro thought about this and wondered if things would be different if he had made different choices with these girls. But he knew that would never happen. Ryuzaki was the main character and Katara knew he could never become the protagonist of this story. He was just a background guy. That's what Katara thought as he watched Ryuzaki grab all the attention effortlessly. Then, Ryuzaki turned to another girl and asked her to come shopping with them. It was clear that Ryuzaki didn't want just three girls in his harem. He wanted more. The girl who had been dozing off finally woke up and asked what was going on. Ryuzaki explained that he and his harem were going swimsuit shopping and invited her too. This girl was Shiho Shimatsuki, Ryuzaki's childhood friend. She always had a serious look on her face, which might seem unfriendly, but that's just how she was. She never laughed or smiled and talked very little. But still, no one disliked her. In fact, she seemed like a princess from a fairy tale. Kotara always thought that Ryuzaki might have special feelings for Shiho, and he thought that she was fit to be the perfect main heroine of this story. Kotaro was lost in thought when he noticed Shiho looking at him. Kotaro's eyes widened and he was confused. He thought that Shiho was actually looking at him, but he quickly figured it must be his imagination. When school ended, Kotaro headed home. Lying in his bed, he was wondering if Ryuzaki and the girls were enjoying their shopping trip. He suddenly got back to reality and decided to not waste any more time and start with his homework. As he looked in his backpack, he realized he couldn't find his notes. He was annoyed at his own stupidity and decided to go back to school to get them. When he got there, he found Shiho still in the classroom sitting on her desk. Kotaro was confused for a bit, and then he tried calling out her name, but he did not get any response. He wondered how to what to say and thought why she did not go shopping with Ryuzaki and the others. He moved closer to her and finally realized that Shiho was actually sleeping. Kotaro could not believe it, and he kept starting at her face for a while. He suddenly broke out of the trance and thought he should just leave. He checked the time and saw it was getting late. He wondered if Shiho would be alright walking home alone at this time, and it would be really bad if she encountered some creep. He thought about waking her up. After a moment's hesitation, Katara decided to gently wake Shiho. Just as he reached out, a curtain fluttered down and covered her. He moved quickly to remove the curtain, accidentally touching and waking her up in the process. Shiho stared at him calmly as she realized who was in front of her. Kotaro hurriedly assured Shiho that he wasn't trying to play a prank on her and started to leave quickly. As Shiho tried to chase after him, she collided with some chairs, making Kotaro rush back to ask if she was all right. To his surprise, Shiho reached out and grabbed his hands and they stared at each other intently. Shiho smiled at him, while Kotaro looked really shocked, still in disbelief at this situation. The moment felt strangely tense. It looked as if Shiho was checking something as Katara's hand while still holding it. 
Kotaro was confused but Shiho started to smile brightly saying that she can speak without any nervousness. Shiho's eyes sparkled with joy as she told Kotaro that she usually felt nervous around others, which was why she was so quiet. But, she admitted, she felt strangely comfortable and unguarded around him. Feeling grateful for his understanding, Shiho asked Kotaro a heartfelt favor. She asked him if he would like to become her friend. The next morning, Kotaro woke up with Shiho's unexpected request still on his mind. Feeling optimistic, he thinks today will be a good day. After arriving at school, he is warmly greeted by his friend Hanakishi. Meanwhile, Ryuzaki effortlessly charms his group of admirers, leaving Kotaro and Hanakishi wondering how someone like Ryuzaki, despite being handsome, manages to maintain such popularity. Reflecting on the dynamics at play, Kotaro concludes that Ryuzaki's charisma and confident demeanor are akin to that of a protagonist in a romantic comedy. Shiho enters the classroom, her expression serious as usual, prompting Hanakishi to comment on her demeanor. Kotaro thought that for ordinary boys like him and his friend, Shiho was someone to be feared but Kotaro still could not believe that he became friends with this girl. Even his friend agrees that Shiho was too cute and anyone would be really nervous being around her. Kotaro thought that Shiho and him live in completely different worlds. Kotaro considers the possibility that if Shiho starts conversing with him more often, he might inadvertently become the center of attention himself. With this in mind, he decides to be really careful. During lunch break, Kotaro notices Shiho looking visibly upset about something. He approaches her to ask about it but Shiho interrupts him and asks if they are friends. Kotaro agrees and Shiho asks why he avoids talking to her. Shiho looked really determined and she told him that if he considers her a friend, then he should talk to her. Kotaro explains that he's hesitant because she's shy and he doesn't want to draw attention in public, which might make her uncomfortable. Shiho started to blush as she realized how Kotaro was really thoughtful. However, Shiho brushes off his concerns, urging him to talk to her regardless of others. Expressing her worry that he might not enjoy being friends with her, Kotaro quickly reassures Shiho apologizing and admitting that he could never dislike her. Touched by his sincerity, Shiho suggests they start addressing each other by their first names as a sign of their close friendship. Kotaro hesitates at first but eventually calls her Shiho, which causes her to blush. She tries to hide her face while trying to open her lunchbox. She started to feel really embarrassed and thought if it was too early to call each other by their first names. She turns towards Kotaro and says that she will call him by his first name once she is calmed down. Feeling hungry, Shiho proposes they eat at a secluded spot at the back of the school where they won't be seen. They find a quiet spot and settle down for lunch. Shiho notices Kotaro only has a simple bread for lunch. She tells him that it's not a balanced diet, and she offers to share her beautifully prepared lunch with him. Initially embarrassed by her generosity, Kotaro hesitates to accept, but Shiho insists playfully teasing him and feeding him small bites until he relents. Kotaro was embarrassed and thought if this was too much or if this much intimacy was normal for Shiho. He eventually admits that her cooking is delicious, which makes Shiho blush again. In reality, Kotaro was so nervous that he could not even taste anything. Realizing her own bold actions, Shiho starts feeling embarrassed but is secretly happy to have shared such a personal moment with Kotaro. His genuine happiness and smile make her realize that she can make someone like him, who considers himself just a background character, smile again. Playfully, Shiho teases Kotaro about his racing heart when she fed him earlier. He tries to deny it, but she mentions she can actually hear his heartbeat. Kotaro remembers what Shiho told him the day before in class. The previous day, Shiho shared something special with Kotaro. She can hear sounds that other people can't. She explains that every person makes a unique sound. Kind people make clear, pleasant sounds, while scary people make noises like nails on a chalkboard. From the sound that people emit, Shiho could judge a person's nature and feelings. It's similar to how some people say they can see sounds or hear colors. It sounds interesting, but Shiho says it's not always a good thing. She can hear both nice, gentle feelings and darker, unsettling emotions like jealousy and lust. This constant barrage of emotions can be overwhelming for her. Shiho says that it was a work of fate when they met. She explains that she is as sensitive as an assassin even when she is sleeping and she could not believe that she did not wake up until he touched her that day. To Shiho, Katara's sound does not make her nervous and it is like chirping birds in a flowing river, which she finds calming. 
This is why she feels so comfortable around him. She also mentions that this is how she knew he was nervous earlier. Kotaru, feeling embarrassed, tries to brush it off by saying that it was not fate and Ryazaki is always with her more than him. But Shiho disagrees, saying Ryazaki's sound is unpleasant to her. Their deep conversation is cut short by Ryazaki's voice. He was asking someone why she called him out there so suddenly. Kotaro realized that it's Azusa, and she says she has something important to tell him. Hearing them getting closer, Shiho decides to hide. But before she can, Ryazaki spots her and demands to know what she's doing there. Then he notices Kotaro and arrogantly asks who he is and what he's doing with Shiho. Ryazaki questions why Kotaro brought Shiho to an empty place and asks what he was doing with his precious childhood friend. Kotaru, on the other hand, is perplexed about why both Ryazaki and Azusa are in this secluded area. He starts to speculate if something significant was about to happen. Ryazaki suddenly seems indifferent to Azusa's presence, shrugs her away, and focuses on asking if Shiho is okay. Despite Azusa having forgotten about Kotaru and often avoiding him, he still feels a sense of responsibility, as her brother. Kotaro quickly realizes that Azusa has brought Ryazaki here to confess her feelings to him, but it's painfully clear that Ryazaki only has eyes for Shiho. This realization hits Kotaro hard, as he reflects on how, despite his efforts, he couldn't become the brother Azusa dreamed of. He decides that he shouldn't get in the way of her love life, no matter how much it might hurt him to stand aside. With a calm voice, Kotaro responds to Ryazaki's question, assuring him that he didn't do anything to Shiho. Katara tells Shiho to leave but Shiho, on the other hand, is already feeling nervous and uncomfortable. Katara asks if she is okay but Shiho grabbed his hand and tries to speak but she could not muster up the courage. Katara remembered what Shiho told him about Ryuzaki, and he understood that Shiho felt really uncomfortable with Ryuzaki. Ryuzaki steps forward, trying to grab Shiho's arm, but Katara quickly intervenes, saying he'll take her to the infirmary and he tells Ryuzaki to get out of the way. Ryazaki, now acting aggressive, retorts that it's Kotaro's fault that Shiho is feeling sick, insinuating that he must have done something to upset her. Maintaining his composure, Kotaro insists that he didn't do anything to cause Shiho's discomfort. Shiho, trying to defuse the situation, assures Kotaro that she's okay and can go to the infirmary alone. However, Ryazaki disregards her wishes and instead instructs Azusa to take Shiho to the infirmary completely ignoring the fact that Azusa had something important to discuss with him. Noticing Azusa's dejected expression, Kotaro attempts to inform Ryazaki that Azusa has something significant to tell him, but the blockhead remains adamant. He insists that Azusa take Shiho to the infirmary because he wants to have a word with Kotaro. Azusa, despite her own feelings and the urgency of her confession, reluctantly agrees and helps Shiho toward the infirmary. Kotaro feels really worried for Azusa, but he knows that Shiho's well-being must come first. Once they are alone, Katara turns to Ryazaki and tries to reassure him that he didn't do anything to Shiho, emphasizing that there's no need for concern. Katara asks why he is so concerned about him saying that he is not even her boyfriend. Ryazaki asserts that they aren't a couple yet, but she is his childhood friend and it's his duty to protect her. He says that Shiho is a misunderstood girl whom nobody truly understands except for him. Ryazaki asserts that Shiho is a weak girl who needs help and he is the only one who can help her. As Ryazaki speaks, Katara flashes back to all the moments he spent with Shiho, realizing that Ryazaki simply doesn't grasp who Shiho truly is. Despite Shiho's usual shy and nervous personality, Katara knows she's just an ordinary girl beneath it all. She is not so weak that she can't live without any help. Kotaro wonders if all protagonists in romantic comedies are as naive as Ryazaki, with a twisted perception that the world revolves around them. To Kotaro, Ryazaki embodies the flaws of a bad harem protagonist, someone who sees others only in terms of their convenience. In an effort to dispel Ryazaki's suspicion and hostility towards him, Kotaro wonders how he could get rid of his hostility towards him. Kotaro decides to play the role of a random background character. Kotaro understood that Ryazaki is anxious because of him, and he is getting really impatient. Kotaro realized that he has to make himself insignificant in Ryazaki's mind. He tells Ryazaki what he wants to hear, fabricating a story about finding Shiho cute and trying to confess to her, only for Shiho to reject him without a second thought. Kotaro continues the fabrication, saying he suggested starting as friends instead, 
but Shiho claimed to be unwell and left. As expected, Ryazaki pats himself on the back before advising Katara to give up pursuing Shiho to avoid getting hurt. He then casually suggests that he and Katara should also start as friends, admitting he didn't even know Katara's name, a fact that even Shiho knew. Despite his inner resentment at playing down his own worth, Katara agrees to be Ryazaki's friend for Shiho's sake and watches as Ryazaki departs. Even though Katara dislikes diminishing himself and acting like a background character, he believes it's necessary because he sees himself as just a mob character and wants to protect Shiho from any further complications. Ever since that day, Ryazaki has been talking to Katara more often. He frequently asks how things are going with Shiho. Katara always says he doesn't want to push her too much or seem too persistent. In reality, he's been avoiding Shiho so Ryazaki won't get suspicious. After school, as he heads home, Katara reflects on the situation. He thought that Ryazaki must be feeling relieved now, and he would be less vigilant tomorrow. He thinks that Ryazaki doesn't need to worry about him. Ever since childhood, Kotaro has always been in the background. He couldn't even think of himself as the protagonist of his own life. He has always been in the corner, always living a flimsy life of a supporting character in someone else's story. When he became a high school student, it became quite obvious as the girls he was close to previously left him. He was just living a lonely and boring life. Katara thought that the reason he was living this boring life was because he was just a side character in Ryazaki's story. He felt like a character that is meant to push the real protagonist who was Ryazaki. He believed that Ryazaki's story would be about a harem protagonist who is tempted by all kinds of girls but loves only his childhood friend with all his heart. It feels ridiculous but it was true that the as soon as the three girls who were Katara's friends met Ryazaki at the school ceremony, their personality changed all of a sudden. Katara knew that their love won't mean anything and he believes the story will end with Ryazaki and Shiho together. Even though Azusa and others might have feelings for him, Katara feels their love won't lead anywhere. Deep in thought, Katara gets on the bus. Katara felt that he could not do anything other than to just stall the story. Even though Shiho told him to talk to her, he can't risk it because Ryazaki would get suspicious. Suddenly, he hears someone asking for help. Turning around, he sees Shiho asking him for help. She explains that she saw him leaving school and tried to catch up but forgot her wallet in class. She thanks him for paying her bus fare and calls him a hero. Humbly, he says he's just a background character, but she disagrees. She tells him he's a good guy who likes helping people and that he has many good qualities. She then says if he can't pat himself on the head, she'll do it for him. She pats his head and tells him not to call himself a background character again. Shiho held Katara's hand and assures him that he is a good person. Katara had always felt that Shiho is too good for him, and he felt inferior to her special presence. Shiho told him to not make berate himself so much while Katara started to blush. He felt that Shiho's kind words were all he needed and he felt like his importance grew a little. Shiho then asked if Katara would show her his house saying that it was her dream to hang out at her friend's house. Shiho follows Katara home and compliments his living room. Katara tells her his parents are not home, and she can make herself comfortable. He asks if she'd like tea or juice, and she chooses juice. She then asks when his parents are coming back because she wants to introduce herself as his friend. He wonders if she can do that since she's usually shy, but she confidently says she can. He tells her his parents are on a business trip, and she concludes that he lives alone. She then offers to spoil him whenever he wants, claiming she's a good big sister. Katara had other feelings on his mind but decides to stay quiet. Looking at her size, Katara felt she was more like his little sister. They sit down in the living room and start chatting. Shiho pretends to be his big sister, but in reality, Katara feels differently. He decides to just go with the flow. Shiho points out that they have a problem as she looks at the snack bowl and cutely says there are no sweets left for him. Katara says there is one piece left and tells her she can have it. After their snack break, Shiho suddenly says it's now time to do that thing. Kotaro is confused, but Shiho casually asks where his room is. As soon as Kotaro points her in the direction, Shiho gets excited and rushes to the room. She notices the many books and asks if he likes reading. Kotaro agrees. Shiho admits she doesn't read much. She is all about anime and games. She says her dream is to play games with her friends. She asks if Kotaro likes to play games. Katara says he doesn't play games and apologizes if his room is boring. 
Shiho reassures him that she doesn't find it boring. She says she is interested in him and wants to know what type of person he is and what he likes. She says she wants to know what he thinks and doesn't care how fun the room is. Shiho smiles, saying that if he thinks his room is boring, she can bring some games to make it fun. He says he looks forward to it but reminds her that they wouldn't have time to play games because midterms are coming up. She gets shocked and insists that a student's job is to play games. She says it doesn't matter if there is an exam and she doesn't want to do such a boring chore. She then says she'll study if he teaches her. Kotaru is surprised at the request and thinks it will be boring to study with a mob character like him teaching the main heroine. He agrees to the request and Shiho gets excited saying that it means she would get to stay with him a lot. Shiho asks if he would study with her at school too. She tells him not to ignore her in school like he did today. Katara tries to think of what to say, but Shiho suddenly interrupts him and asks if he lives alone. She hears the sound of footsteps outside and asks him about it. Meanwhile, Azusa is outside the house, announcing her arrival. Shiho looks sad and called Katara a cheater, saying she didn't know he already had a girlfriend. Kotaro was confused at first but then realized Shiho must have thought he was an only child living in this house. Shiho felt miserable and said it was hard knowing her friend had a girlfriend. Kotaro realized Shiho must have heard Azusa's footsteps and assumed they were a girl's footsteps. Feeling nervous, Kotaro told Shiho to relax and said he would introduce Azusa to her. Kotaro went outside and called Azusa, asking if they could talk for a bit. He explained that he had a friend over and asked if he could introduce her. Azusa was surprised, saying it was unusual, but she agreed. Shiho casually walked into the room and was shocked to see who Katara's friend was. Azusa screamed, saying there was no way Shiho was Katara's friend. Shiho screamed in panic too, realizing it was Azusa, her classmate. Katara tried to calm Shiho down and explain, but Shiho felt dejected and interrupted him, saying she got it. She reluctantly told Katara he found a cute girl while she was away. It was a big misunderstanding. Kotaro tried to calm her down and finally explained that Azusa was his stepsister. Shiho was still in shock and said that must mean Azusa was his girlfriend. Kotaro tried to explain it was nothing like that, but Shiho wasn't listening. Azusa asked him what Shiho was talking about, and Kotaro explained that Shiho thought Azusa and he were dating. Kotaro asked Azusa to clear things up. Azusa explained to Shiho that they were just family, and she was not Kotaro's girlfriend. Shiho finally calmed down and said they did seem a bit distant towards each other, realizing she misunderstood the situation. Meanwhile, Kotaro and Azusa were speechless. Shiho realized what she had been thinking and buried her face in a pillow out of extreme embarrassment. Kotaro tried to call her, but she didn't want to move. Shiho apologized for being impolite while still burying her face in the pillow. Kotaro offered to walk her out if she wanted to leave, but Shiho told him not to worry and just leave her for now. Shiho ran out of the house as fast as she could, still hiding her face, and took the pillow with her. Kotaro closed the door behind her and noticed Azusa standing there. Azusa asked if Shiho was okay, and Kotaro explained that Shiho told him her mom would pick her up. Azusa said she didn't know he and Shiho interacted at all. Azusa remembered seeing them together during lunch break that day and was surprised. Kotaro, feeling embarrassed, explained that they had been getting along a bit better recently. The conversation between Kotaro and Azusa felt awkward after two months of not interacting at all. Kotaro thought maybe Azusa was asking about Shiho because she was worried. He tried to explain, but Azusa interrupted, saying she was wondering if Ryazaki knew about this. Azusa felt cold as ever, and Kotaro's mind started racing as he thought about the cleanest way to exit this precarious situation. Kotaro knew that Azusa liked Ryazaki and that Ryazaki's true love was Shiho. No matter how much Azusa and the others tried to win him over, Ryazaki wouldn't even consider their feelings. Kotaro felt that Azusa now knew about Shiho interacting with a boy other than Ryazaki and might see it as a great opportunity to snitch to Ryazaki. Kotaro realized there was a possibility Ryazaki would become even more involved with Shiho because of this situation. He knew Azusa was blindly devoted to Ryazaki and wouldn't listen to him. More concerned about Shiho than anything else, Katara quickly bowed to Azusa and apologized. He pleaded with her to keep this to herself, saying he couldn't explain the details now, but Ryazaki shouldn't know about this. He bowed harder, begging Azusa not to say anything. Azusa tried to calm him down, asking why he was acting so flustered. 
She said she didn't understand the situation but agreed to keep it a secret if that's what Katara wanted. Katara was surprised at first, but Azusa explained that this wouldn't change what she really wanted. Azusa smiled and said she only wanted to work hard to make Ryazaki fall in love with her. Katara felt the conviction in her words and was surprised to see Azusa smile after a long time. He thought maybe he had underestimated her love. Unlike him, Azusa was facing Ryazaki fairly and was straightforward with her feelings. Katara realized he had misunderstood Azusa and felt like a failure as a big brother. He apologized to her again, but Azusa was confused why he was apologizing so much. Azusa said she was going back to her room now and told Katara she would give it her best shot and that he should do the same. Katara was surprised to see this side of her and thanked her. He genuinely wished for Azusa to give her best and felt that even though he was a failure as a big brother, he would always be wishing for her happiness. Meanwhile, Azusa went to her room and thought that even though she had said such terrible things, Katara still acted like a big brother to her. Before their parents got married, Azusa had a biological older brother who was always by her side. She relied on him more than anyone else. But one day, he disappeared from her life. Azusa waited day after day for his return but, as a child, she didn't realize what had really happened to her brother. She thought her brother wouldn't come back because she wasn't a good girl. Even her father couldn't explain to her what had happened. From that moment on, Azusa couldn't move on and felt as if time had completely stopped for her. She kept her appearance the same as that day, hoping that when her brother came back, he would easily recognize her. Her father remarried, hoping that Azusa would feel better but it didn't happen. Katara tried to meet her expectations by playing the role of a big brother. However, Azusa didn't feel the same way and felt distant. At that time, Ryuzaki, who looked exactly like her brother, appeared before her. Azusa did not dislike Kotaru, but after meeting Ryuzaki, she fell in love with him as if being drawn to him by an irresistible force, to the point where she could no longer see anything else around her. Azusa knew what would happen if she snitched about Shiho and Katara to Ryuzaki. She still felt she had to keep Katara's word since he was so nice to her even when she did not act the same way towards him. She felt Katara's kindness and decided not to take advantage of it. She promised herself she wouldn't say anything to Ryuzaki and felt really sorry for acting this way towards Katara. 